Okay. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Have you watched any of my typing sessions before? I've not watched one fully, but I have watched um, about like seven minutes of one. I just clicked randomly in the middle. <laughs> okay. And did you avoid watching more thinking I might want to do this and I don't want to corrupt my understanding of it or something? Or just you just for like, I don't want to. I purposely didn't watch fully just because that of that reason, yeah. Of the latter okay. or the former, the former, yeah. Cool. How long have you known about personality type? So I've known since well, I took the 16 personalities test about in 2020. However, cognitive functions 2021. So it's been around about like three, four years. Three years. I want to say three, four years. Okay, cool. <laughs> Can you tell me, um, have you gone out of town on a vacation in recent months? Um, not really, no. The, the biggest, like, I've had a similar change since I just um, moved in a few weeks ago for college, but, like, I've not gone out of town on, like, a planned vacation recently, no. Okay, so did you just move into college for your freshman year? Yes, for my freshman year. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Well, then that's that's that'll, that'll work fine because it was a new experience for you. Um, can you tell me some of the details about the process of you know arriving at the college, unpacking your stuff, meeting your roommate or whatever? Can you tell me just sort of give me some beats about it so um i arrived with my grandmother who was able to take me and a few days we stayed at a hotel and then we eventually moved in um actually being on campus and moving in i was very i was anticipating a lot um because i just wanted to be settled i just wanted to like go in like move in and be done with that i don't because there was a bit of confusion about like when the move-in was so but once it was done it was very simple um my roommate was actually there when i first moved in he had already moved in um and we'd already my roommate and i had already been calling for a few months so it was cool meeting him and then that day my grandmother also left so new campus knew everything um but it was very simple to move in yeah okay did they have orientation for you yeah, so orientation was the same day and the following day, like two parts. And it was it was a lot, a lot of socializing the first two days, like very a lot of it. Um, but yeah, I was just jumping straight to it with meeting new people. I didn't have any time to sort of like just go person by person. It was just like a lot at once. So did the orientation structure things such that you'd have to engage with a variety of other students or did you make that happen yourself? Um, originally it was the structure we did. We were put in large groups with like 12 other people. And it was just so interesting to think like how there are so many different groups of 12. And then that was also a session of orientation, meaning there were even more. So, but it was structured that way for us to interact with others um but after that like when it was meal time and more like leisure time then i did sort of make an effort along with my roommate because we were sticking together um just because i knew that it would have to be done anyways but like, yeah so did you like go into do you have like a cafeteria or what do they call it a dining hall yeah so that's where our first dinner was like with everybody from our orientation session a lot of people um, yeah, it was a dining hall. Okay, so did you and he like go up to some other people at a different table and say, hey, can we sit with you like that? <laughs> so I'm trying to think. The, actually, I split up with him at the beginning of dinner. Um, I was with um, one other person I had met in my orientation group. 
and then I met two other people there just naturally and like introducing. It wasn't as awkward as you just put it like, oh, hi, can like we sit here? But it was like, it felt a little bit that way. But and then after I met up with him near the end of it and sat, did that very thing, I sat with two people that I hadn't known before and then introduced ourselves and tried to find common interests and all that basic stuff. But yeah. Okay. And what do you think about the social skills in general? of your same age peers? Um, like, are you asking me to critique their social skills? Well, I'm, I, I'm kind of wondering how to ask this question because it's really kind of a generational curiosity question. I, yeah. I imagine younger people like you being more socially deaf at, a, at, this, at your age than I was at my age. But I don't, I don't know if you from within the perspective of that generation you probably still see the same splay of variation it might just be shifted over and more less awkward or something i don't know exactly but, yeah i mean we with social media a lot like we've the difference i think one i can think of is that we've been able to see on instagram so many other like faces and people and then it was like oh i had talked to that person on message like messaging them like two months ago and like let me go talk to them so i think a lot of people have a lot more like ways to grow and start other than just being like hey like my name is nick like oh they some people had like past conversations or past faces they had recognized at least for me like i had seen a lot of faces that i had seen on instagram and been like and then i introduced myself to in person but um like pre-gaming familiarity yeah that's that's a good way to put it that's a good way to put it yeah uh -huh. and i that hadn't been something i had thought of uh as, as something that would be a significant difference i was just thinking that in general younger people probably have better social skills because the digital age empowers that yeah it's also like there's a lot more i think meeting people a lot of people in this way anyways it's bound to be surface level anyways and like, there's people who are gonna, like, you're gonna meet one day and never see again, but they'll seem so into the conversation and so like, um, seem like really genuine. And then like, I don't know, after a while, after you finish the conversation, it's like, you know, you're not gonna see them again, or like, you don't know if that was an act or not, or at least that's like how I see it, I don't know. Yeah. So coming into college, having only been there for like a week or whatever, um what what vision do you have for what your college experience is going to be like um i see right now um i'm trying to like lay down like i'm trying to like adjust my brain to like what the schoolwork is going to be like because i don't know if right now i'm on week like three or four it's it feels like simple enough i'm scared that like later down in the semester it's going to get worse or like the next few years it'll definitely like the difficulty will increase um but i see myself like staying on top of it um and also right now i'm trying to join a lot of clubs and like get involved outside of that with my interests through like music and um languages um and is, is, I, that, is that trying to stay on top of it aspirational because you uh, you remember yourself struggling with that in high school or is it confident because you know that from high school that you you typically do stay on top of stuff um i've had waves of like completely like not doing my best and i just like physically like mentally sorry like mentally i can't because i've i'm either burnt out and then like in high school and then there are times when I'm just like completely like focused and like will do every single thing no matter what. Um, but it's mostly from like my experience in high school, like wanting to be on top of it. Cause I'll have like, I can, like my junior year of high school, I was very on top of it like that whole year. I don't know how I got through that with the amount of sleep I was getting too. But then the year before my sophomore year was like, I got a lot of sleep and I still could not like do a lot of assignments. So I don't know. I'm just going off of that. 
Maybe the reason you didn't get as much sleep was because you were spending that time doing those assignments. Yeah, I just chose like sleep sometimes because I was like, you know what, I'm tired. <laughs> well, let's talk about sleep a little bit. How many hours do you think you need a night? How many hours do I think I need? Yeah. For myself, like not yeah. recommended. For me, I go pretty well off of like seven hours because my body won't let me like sleep longer than like eight or nine. Like my body will want me to wake up or I'll get like headaches when like I'll wake up with a headache if I sleep too long because I don't know, like water maybe or whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Or and then too little, obviously, I'll like not feel good at all. But usually like seven hours, six, seven. Okay. Do you have trouble falling asleep? You know, as a kid, I really did. But that was just like me as a child. But now I'm able to fall asleep a lot easier. I've been able to like, like I learned, I'd say like five years ago, oh, let me get some blackout curtains so I can actually have like a darker room and like, let me do this and that and like set up that so that I can fall asleep better. Now I can fall asleep relatively with like simple easily yeah not super quick but like i'd say like 10 minutes okay do you have a uh routine of things you do that you rely on to fall asleep for example when i get into bed i always make these noises turn back and forth like a certain amount of times and yeah. then i try to go ahead and say you know i've got a certain thing and i think about certain things yeah. Or do you like, to, for example, to have a the like Rachel? She listens to YouTube videos. She doesn't go to sleep with her own thoughts at all. Um, I've definitely fallen victim to like watching a lot of YouTube in bed with like <laughs> ASMR videos. I used to watch a lot before bed and like relaxing sort of things. And I I do that occasionally now. But for me, it's like what you had said with like. Ever since I was younger, I would have to like have the blanket and like sheet like ratio and like the way over my head like perfect, or else I would just like not go to sleep like or I'd feel uncomfortable or something was wrong. Mm -hmm. And then um, with my thoughts, I just let my mind like take control because like I'll like I'm not even realizing what I'm thinking. Sometimes when you like snap back like conscious a little bit and you're like wait i was thinking about that like you just don't know because your mind is just like running but um right. that that's usually how i go like make myself super comfortable and then like let my mind take off okay cool um what's your relationship with the various food vice things like caffeinated beverages sugary things Mm. so like i'm not a sweet tooth like i'm more of a savory person like i i won't need sugar or also like i won't crash out from not eating sugar like i mean obviously there's sugar in a lot of stuff we eat so i'm still having some intake but i'm not like gonna die if i don't have dessert every day but oh, um coffee. coffee okay so caffeine currently i don't drink any caffeine just because it's better for like myself like caffeine a lot of times will make me like too on top of things like i'll constantly be thinking about like okay what do i need to do what's next whereas okay. like if i'm off what, of it i can go at a good pace what about alcohol i don't i don't really mess with it yeah okay do you exercise I or do plenty sporty activities that make you exercise and incidentally. Um, the only one I can think of is biking because that's it's good for me because I can just like not I can like think without just sitting like I'm doing something at least. So it's like easier to have my thoughts flow. Um, whereas like other sports, I feel like I have to focus on something too much. Like it's too like yeah um i did sports when i was younger i did soccer and karate um for like seven years or each but um currently i just i'm not like it's hard for me to also like 
for the gym too i try to go but it's really hard for me to like keep a routine like i like the idea of having a routine and like setting it all up but like actually doing it it's like i'll fall off within like a few weeks and i get really disappointed <laughs> it's like well okay did you ever do karate while playing soccer <laughs> like at the same time or like like yeah like you're running down the field and then ah, yeah, yeah. wow um you know i'll this is it's been a while i think i was like 12 the last time like i did both but um i don't know i i'd often think about like the movements or like because we had to memorize a lot of movements a lot of like sets of movements and like i'll do those in my head like randomly while walking or doing soccer or whatever i won't be doing soccer while i'm like in my head though that's not happening do you think your fist should be licensed as a deadly weapon my what your fists oh definitely not anymore i'm not when like you go to an arcade and there's like the punch thing like you know i'm not getting the high score like it's just not gonna happen. Sorry. Um so you mentioned that you were joining some clubs and stuff, right? Yeah. And are can you tell me your your rationale for that? Is it to uh help you to be more socially engaged? Is it because you want to network for after college or something else? um i really my main when i'm okay if i want to join a club it's because i like the actual thing they're doing so like in middle school i was in a glee club because i love music and mu instruments and singing like it's interest based but um i'm thinking a lot to like i want to go to law school so i'm thinking a lot about like the future and those applications and also like building a good like college resume. I know I just started, but like that. So I am trying to join some that I know will benefit me later, but I might not enjoy as much as like, I don't know, a songwriting club or like the things like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So what made you decide you wanted to go to law school? I, you know, it's still tentative, obviously, but that's my main, like, what my mind is thinking of right now. Um, First of all, there's the monetary, like, I want money, <laughs> but not like, sure. oh my God, I'm going to, I'm not going to die if I'm not making super high things. Like, I'm not money obsessed, but I do want like security in that form. Um, I also just want the experience. Law, there. Do, probably, but I love like learning and like the, I love reading too. So like just the idea of like reading a lot and the idea of like, an institution that like has a lot of reading which i know it's just like that's so superficial but like i want to learn more about like law and stuff so i can just have that yeah okay cool um let me see okay so the clubs are interest-based but you're keeping in mind their utility in terms of getting into law school or in terms of networking with other professionals in your working life i'd say yeah so i'm trying to like join one or two interest ones and just have those and maybe not go as like regularly and then i'm also going to have like clubs that will benefit me later with yes like networking finding out about, I don't know, internships. And then also like, if I get really involved with one of those specific clubs that are, they could be like, I don't know, like a stuff that's not specifically interest-based, but more like prospective. Like if I like could have a position and then like, I don't know, go higher like that. Not because like, I wanna just like be in power, but just cause I want to be involved and I want to like know what goes on. And then I know that could like benefit me with like my resume, like graduating college. Okay. So could you see yourself ever going into politics? 
I mean, okay, I'm interested in the current student government at my school and in high school I did student government, like leadership. But then politics, like outside of that, I'm really, <laughs> I don't know, I'm kind of scared of like have, having, I don't like the competition aspect a lot of it. Like I did have to run against people in the past and like seeing some friends of mine like completely support one person's campaign and then ignore mine and i thought they were my friend like it was kind of like emotionally i just could not like be so competitive and like be pit against another person even if they're not even coming for me personally it's like the people and the people behind that are trying to like push like that i think mm -hmm. politics of like advoc advocacy for communities could be cool um so what are you yeah. studying undergraduate undergraduate okay so right now i'm studying linguistics because i like languages a lot i love learning languages and like the syntax and the evolution and all the socio like anthropology all that sort of stuff okay well that's a good uh that's a good major thank you you know uh i took a linguistics class it was one of my most memorable classes in college because the the gist of it was everybody had to create their own language accounting for all these grammatical realities and stuff you know? that's so cool <laughs> yeah it, and it really made it really impacted how i thought about language too um linguists are some of the few non-hard science intellectuals i respect oh wow <laughs> um okay so okay Let's see where i want to ask here you said you would probably enjoy would enjoy being in a songwriting club do you already do songwriting in the status quo do i already do songwriting yes yeah yeah um i do a lot of it like recent i'd say like a year ago i started like doing lyric like with words like lyrical songwriting before it was all just on like the piano since that's my main instrument like doing mm -hmm just that not with words but the past year i've been getting into like using words and how to like experiment with them next to each other and like it's really in like i have them in a notebook and then in my notes app and like i the best times are like when i like randomly think of something like on i don't know on the t like the subway like the subway or like something like that or like where i'm going um i really want to like write quality songs and poems and stuff like i want to do that so so is the process for you then that you write the melody line on the right hand of the piano and then you have to find words that fit syllabically with the the melody i've okay i i've never i've only tried one song like that but I'm actually really, I'm not that great at melody creation. Like I try, <laughs> um, cause usually my hands on the piano, since like, I have like a good amount of experience since I was like really young. So like, I just play a lot of broken chords and random sounds. And then I have words like that describe that vibe, but then actually putting the words to a melody to be on in the middle between those two, it's kind of, I'm trying to get better at it. <laughs> I'm trying to get better well, at it. I mean, producing tracks and writing songs are different things. So, right, yeah. We we all get sometimes stuck in the middle of <laughs> between between the rail, railway cars and the subway cars. There you go. <laughs> um, okay. So, do you have a vision of what you'd like? your music to do you know like what makes you feel like proud of yourself like i did well as a creator here in 
working with this music versus when you think, oh, that was just a waste of time. So I, what makes me happy is when I like can make an instrumental that I'm proud of match up with, like I said, lyrics and melody and like putting them all together. And then I've like, I've, I've barely shown people, like I mostly show people my words, not really like everything put together because I'll have recordings and my voice will sound bad and over that. But my main, what I want to do is like create, I want to like find new like ways to write songs or find new like, um, like ways to like sounds as well. And then like be able to make it work and not just sound like different to be different, but like to actually like be long lasting. Um, and when do if that I do timelessness, so timelessness links to quality. Is that what you're saying? That things that are good, they're they'll be appreciated a long time from now. Ah, uh, that's <laughs> it's subjective. So I don't know. Like timeless could like there's some timeless songs to some people who enjoy certain genres. And because I don't think some long lasting songs, I mean, it does happen for a reason, but just yeah, because, it's like, not it, subjective. It, it's not it's, subjective, but but no, but <laughs> but like, I don't know, someone's long lasting playlist is not going to be the same as like everyone's like top 100, like Rolling Stone, like some grand list of the best song, timeless songs ever. I don't know, well, sure. But everybody can sing a Britney Spears song, probably multiple of them. Nobody can sing a Jessica Simpson song, even though they both were like the same kind of thing almost when they came out around the same time. I Britney, don't know. Britney Spears had some good songs and Jessica Simpson had no good songs. No, I don't think it like that. I think like I think it's just like like trying to push the bat I think what pushes the boundaries like new discoveries and like new ways to try things out and then like making that accessible to people but not giving up the like discovery and the quality is what matters like I think that way okay uh, I'm not exactly sure what that means but <laughs> okay sorry <laughs> I, don't, I don't normally say that but I'm not sure exactly what you mean. But regardless, that's fine. Um, All right. uh, so would you say it's easier for you to write too many words and have to try to edit a lot or is it easier for you to grok the singular vision and you just have to be meticulous and precise in putting it together into yeah. an elegant, concise thing? It's definitely the second one. Um, I've only had like trouble on one song, but that was when I was beginning to write. Um, of having to downsize it because I was trying to fit it into a specific like instrumental I had. But no, when I'm actually writing, if I have like an I like this idea, like I write a few words and then those few words give me an idea, then it'll just be like placing stuff that'll like match accurately with like what's already been written. I'm more like meticulous like that. I don't with okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you wouldn't be somebody who'd be inclined to freestyle lyrics over something. I I mean I <laughs> I can, but you like can. it's just like dumb stuff or like okay. stuff that so, rhymes. But yeah. So are you? Do you think of that as a waste of time because you don't think you're very good at it, or because you think that? It's never going to be as good as something that's meticulously constructed. Um, kind of both. I think I'm not great at it, and like a lot of what the way I go about it is 
a lot better if it's more meticulously constructed. But I know that there are artists and like I don't think like, there are. Oh, I don't oh. think so. <laughs> there are times when you just blurt out words and it turns into art. I think, but it's sure, sure. Look, I, I've I've made up plenty of random shit all my <laughs> life, right? Some of those yeah. things have come out fantastic, right? But yeah. even those things that come out fantastic, if you then take that fantastic off the cuff recording of it and say how if i now take all the good ideas in this and construct the best possible song out of it you're still going to make some changes to some things to improve it because it's never best with the least effort the life's just not that convenient it's i agree i agree <laughs> so okay uh so, have, did you ever work like at a retail store or anything like that, or cashier but job? Man? Those jobs, I've not worked a like retail type job before. The most of the ones I've been in are like more, like hands on, type of stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily expect somebody during college to. Have worked at a regular job at all you know but I no, figured not a nine to five yet <laughs> i mean but like i figured if, if somebody your age had worked they'd probably have worked like at a retail store or something um okay so uh let me ask you about your relationship with goal setting and planning okay and also with keeping track of your schedule. Do you, let's start with start there. Do you write down in a little book, like keep track of your schedule? You have like a calendar or something? Or you use Google oh. Calendar or use your phone or, or what? Yeah, so more recently I've been using Google Calendar just because new college, it's like new place and like I need to know when I'm going to different meetings, lectures, because it's not like high school where you just enter a building and exit after the day is done. Whereas like, yeah, with high school, I would just keep stuff in my head and it worked out because I'm like pretty good at that. But in for now, right now, I'm writing stuff down. Like actually next to me, I have my little like checklist. <laughs> um, okay. Because um, I, it's good for me like that, but then also I can worry about like, oh, do I have everything down and like, a lot of times like i'll write stuff down but i'll be worried like oh do i have everything down or i'll start wondering like oh this do i have enough time for myself but so yeah i have a calendar writing, would you say that writing something down doesn't liberate you from remembering it in other words even though you've written it down you still remind yourself periodically of the thing you've written down yeah yeah that's that's how okay. it <laughs> um I, I think it's important for me to write it down so that I'll I'll successfully remind myself. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's not even like for me, like it's not even useful. I do it just for the well, not just for the but major like mostly because I can just like have nice colors on a like calendar or like a whiteboard, but I really don't need it. Yeah. Uh I feel you. Yeah. I I need it for things like this. Okay, that's what I hate it for. <laughs> I see. But yeah. uh, when when I had a more routine life, in other words, you know, I either had a job or you know was doing doing something productive regularly. Then you, it things pretty much they don't vary that much. If something's coming up, like oh, don't forget, Eric, you got that unusual thing on Thursday afternoon. I'll remind myself about that every day for weeks in advance. Yeah. For me, like, the reminders, the, like, I just, my mind will already do it for me. It's, like, I'm, it just does it automatically. And, like, with college, there's, like, a lot of overlapping club meetings and things and schedules. And, like, if I overbook myself, like, my brain will, like, tell me of this but then i'll forget about the other one at the same time and i didn't make a decision about which one i should do and then i'm like okay that little reminder system in my head got like kind of 
um, funky and like weird, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you think that you that you know things more often by having references in your previous experience, or do you think you know things more often by making observations of the of what's going on right now? Um, do I, I understood the last part. Do I make, um, could you repeat that one more time, please? When you know something, mm. you know something more often because you have a previous experience that's the same or very close, or do you know things because you're observing something that's happening right now and just know what it means? I like feel like it's the second one like i like it's very like when i know something like that it's like definitely in the moment like can you give me I any need, examples i'm trying to think like when i don't i need like an example for this one i, I don't know okay well for example um knowing in the moment might be you walk into a room and the vibe feels off and you kind of look around and you're like oh shit that lady is fighting with that guy over there i bet or because yeah. there's a lot of weird body language going on here um that's not you've never met any of those people before let's say you don't yeah. know anything from your previous experience that's informative, but you can just tell. And then yeah, and I, the, other, yeah. the other, the other one would be something like, um, oh shit, Jenny's upset. I know Jenny well. I've seen this facial expression before. She may look happy to other people, but I know her. She's actually upset. I feel like it's more like, just noticing like the like way people like interact or like or just like like you said body language like i think okay. i'm pretty good at noticing that um with like but also i also like reference like the if it's if it's somebody i know i will think about how they are usually but okay i don't know which one i rely on more okay well you're in a was still for you a very newish at least um place in that's that not you know everything prior to a few weeks ago was foreign to what's happening now exactly uh, so it's kind of a tricky situation to ask this question about because it's natural that in this moment in your life your past is going to be less informative because you have less of it stretching back in this location in this phase of your life right we only have a few yeah. weeks of past really they are right. friends yeah um so uh has there been anything that's disappointed you thus far that stands out or anything that's been pleasantly surprising that stands out in the past few weeks um something kind of disappointing is that like i'm so like it's like that shock of like being somewhere completely new um i haven't noticed until like now a few weeks in that like i'm not thinking about my old town and i'm like not thinking about like i i do think about my family but like not as like periodically i'd say as like i should be <laughs> Like, I'm more like everything that's like going on here. I'm like, my mind is on more than um, like back home, which I'm kind of disappointed because I'm like, shouldn't I be thinking about like calling my mom more? But I don't know if that'll come in later in the semester. And she <laughs> um, called you. And no, most of it's I did um, call her because um, she just I just she just had a baby. So I'm like calling to check up on that. But like it's 
most I'm kind of disappointed that I'm not like reaching out as much as I should or like thinking about like old relationships I had. Like I do keep in contact with some, but I'm starting to like forget some and I'm like kind of disappointed that I am. Okay. Um, do you think it's valuable to preserve those old relationships because they might be useful later on or because they deserve your loyalty by virtue of seniority or something else? It definitely seniority. Like, I don't think like a lot of them, I know I'm never going to like have any useful out like outcome from just like maintaining some, but, um, if I ever like when I go back, if I ever see somebody, I'm gonna obviously like try to talk to them because I like if someone is from like my past like that, like I'll still want to like say hi and like try to talk because like the latter thing you mentioned. Okay. What do you think is a more important uh value for others to uphold when dealing with you do you think it's more important that you, you'd be happier if they could only be one if they be fair to you or if they be kind to you um fair as in like being okay well, let's put it this way yeah. um imagine you have a friend and they have a bad habit. They have one of two bad habits. And the first bad habit, every time there's a pizza and there's eight slices, they'll take five slices and just leave you three slices. Yeah. They have a bad habit. They always split up four slices, but they speak really kind of like harshly. They're not necessarily being mean or cruel. They're just, um, they just give you constantly the, like the most, the least varnished, harshest truth. Okay, so if I like knew that friend like was already harsh and like very like truth saying like that, then I would totally be okay with that because like that's how I know they're like. Um, but honestly, I'd prefer like the first person. Like I'd I prefer like their honesty but if that honesty is being like true like very like like honest and to the point where it might be harsh i'm okay with that too i mean if that's if that's how i know they are okay what if instead of this um that thing you're talking about watching a, a friend who's dealing with third parties so in this third party this friend in one scenario it speaks very politely and nicely and stuff to the person, but takes the five slices of pizza. In the other scenario, they're just kind of rude and like, you know, like one of those customers who thinks, you know, employees are <laughs> supposed to be their bitch or whatever, you know. Um, so which are you going to judge more harshly watching your friend do that to the third party? Um, I think I judge the first one more actually, just because if you're like being like fake, well, not fake, but like being polite to be polite, but then like doing something contradictory, like taking like five, like taking five slices without like talking with the per I don't know, like, but couldn't they just be nice but also selfish? Like, you know, like. <laughs> I really, really like you. And I also really like to get more pizza than you. Well, why don't, why don't they like, they do it without talking, right? Like, like about the pizza. Why don't they like talk to them about like, like, <laughs> hey, can I like, I honestly, I'm, I'm critiquing they're, they're them more greedy. is what I'm trying to say. They're, they're I'm greedy. <laughs> they're greedy, but they're not, they're not fake. <laughs> No, yeah, I just appreciate people who are like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, I'm going to ask you some TI questions now. These are going right. to be like kind of test questions you might get in the math class or something or logic class. Um, 
if Susie has soup on Tuesday, then she'll have salad on Wednesday. Wednesday is here. She does not have salad. Can we conclude that she necessarily didn't have soup? Oh my gosh, what? <laughs> if, if Susie has soup on Tuesday, then yeah. she will have salad on Wednesday. Okay. She does not have salad on Wednesday. Yeah. Is it necessarily the case that she did not have soup on Tuesday? In this question, she did not have soup on Tuesday. In this question, not in real life, because I feel like that. What's that the word if? If okay, sorry. That was there. We go. So we're in this question. She didn't have soup on Tuesday. Okay. okay fine. Cool. If some turtles like rock music yeah. and all things that like rock music enjoy guitar, is it necessarily the case that some turtles enjoy guitar? If turtles enjoy rock music, some then that turtles means they like guitar. Rock. Oh, if some, if some turtles, turtles enjoy rock music and all things that enjoy rock music like guitar, is it necessarily the case that some turtles like guitar? True. Correct. Okay. Can you tell me who my mother's father's wife is in relationship to me? Mother's father's. That's your. <laughs> that's your um. <laughs> mother's father's wife. That's your uh, maternal grandfather. Is that correct? Your maternal grandmother. Grandmother, there. Yeah, with his wife, grandmother. Yeah. Yeah. Maternal right. grandmother. Yeah. Cool. Um, now I'd like to shift gears a little bit. Uh, can you break down the task of giving yourself a haircut into exactly five steps? Myself a haircut? <laughs> okay. Give, giving oneself a haircut into exactly five steps. All right. Um, you're gonna get your your clippers, your supplies. If you okay, are we assuming they have supplies or no? You tell me. Okay. I'm trying to boil this down to five. Um. Okay, we're going to the store. We're gonna buy exactly what we need for those for a haircut, and we get exactly what we need. Okay, that's step one: going to the store and buying um, clippers because you've never cut your hair before. Let's just say. And then number two, you. Um. Oh, hold on, hold on. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Step one. Okay, step one. You're gonna figure out what haircut you want. And with that research online, like what clipper you should, like what type of clippers or whatever you need. Then step two is you're going to go seek out at the wherever, Amazon or the store, go buy them. Then once they're in your possession, you're going to. Let's hopefully you have a tutorial. I'm very into tutorials. So like, let's just right. let's see. waiting for them to arrive with Steph. Um, no, I'm combining them. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. That's your prerogative. Okay. Um, then once they arrive, I'm not going to make a step unboxing it. Okay, that's not right now in my five steps. My five, Okay, number three, you're going to um pull up the picture you originally had and set out all your clippers so they're all right there. So you know when everything's there. Step four, you're going to watch that or look at the website tutorial or watch that video and do it exactly how it tells you. <laughs> and then number five, you're going to go walk to the mirror. You're going to be like, wow, I look pretty, I look pretty sick right now. <laughs> Basically, none of those steps for giving yourself a haircut. Step 
or it had as an addendum on the end of watching a video that you would then do that stuff. But every other step was something that is not part of giving a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> this is, your answer is very, very typical of a certain or, or a certain test result. There's a test I give, and if people score me on it, they give answers just like that to this question. That's why I'm laughing because I've heard this before, and I know. I what fell it into means. your trap. I fell into your trap. I know. I think not a trap. I the, I could have I could have found the same kind of positive result on the ti questions but i didn't yeah if, you, if, format if, if it, I had, it. you might have perceived the ti questions as a trap you know yeah um okay so uh well that's pretty telling uh i i believe i uh, you your type determined with a very high degree of certainty but i'm gonna ask a couple more questions test a couple more things so i can Lock that down. Okay. Um, can you tell me how many different ways can you come up with to to? Oh, sorry. Let me let me let me let me start up. Okay, I'm going to tell you the, a story starter, and I want you to finish the story for me. Okay. Okay. Once I love a time, <laughs> Once upon a time. There were an eagle and a trout. And the eagle was standing on the side of the lake, and the trout was jumping out of the water. And as the trout would jump out, he'd say, Quit looking at me, you bird of prey. And the eagle just stared steely eyed at the trout. And the trout would jump out and say, You think you're going to swoop over and get me? You can't do it because you're standing on the ground. Now you finish the story. <laughs> Little did the trout know that the eagle was not just standing on the ground, but was anticipating the fish, the trout's every centimeter of movement. That right as the trout finished speaking, the eagle leapt up with its wings and it snapped it right across. I don't know, but it's mid, whatever fish is anatomy it snaps right there. And the eagle laughs with a mouth full of fish while the chow continues repeating the same thing it said right before it passed over and over again until it gets digested. Well, the trout's family in the lake below sobs in mourning um and <laughs> okay so the eagle the eagle killed the trout each trout fine um what do you respect more in other people do you respect more when they follow through and get things done get things accomplished make an impact or when they come up with a clever new idea that uh, provides a very interesting twist to something um definitely in other number people. in other people um yeah. i respect more of the second one um, although I do think like, like hardworking, anyone can master that it, not everyone can find out a clever idea that's like unique to who finds it. Um, okay. Uh, what would make you more angry at yourself? Would it make you more angry at yourself? If you had, gone, if you went to a party and you weren't really having a good time, 
And, but you let yourself get talked in to stay at the party, even though you didn't really want to. And you kind of kick yourself when you get home, like, damn it, why don't I ever assert my own interests? Or would it make you more mad at yourself if you go to this party and you you make a faux pas? You say to this lady, like, oh, it's, it's great that you, you have your mother here with you at the party. And the other lady says, I'm her sister. She's really offended. Um, definitely the second one. I feel like that's really like embarrassed. That's like, well, which one do you think you're more likely to do? I'm more likely to like do the first one, like, because I just can't like <laughs> the second one. Like, I can't really imagine myself. Uh, wait, can you explain the second situation again? That was so like you meet up with Marcy. And this woman who's clearly related to her, they look so similar. Yeah. And you know Marcy. She's she's your age, right? Yeah. And you go, Oh Marcy, it's so great that you your mother's here at this party with you. I, I wouldn't have expected that. Goes, this is my older sister. You know, the older sister says, I'm her older sister, I'm not her mother. I'm not that like that old. And she's got her feelings hurt. Which one would I be like more angry at myself for? I'd definitely be like a lot angrier and like overthinking after about the second one. Cause like, <laughs> like I try to like, like, so like stuff socially like that. Like I walk on eggshells. If I like do something wrong like that, then I'll be like really like disappointed, angry, and like all conf like confusion, all these things. I'm a lot less likely to do it though because I am walking on eggshells. Of, like with that, like I don't want to do that. Like that's scary. <laughs> okay, so are you somebody who's much more likely to ask what do you want to eat than to answer it? Yeah. Uh, well, okay. I like being like that's sorry. I'm answering with too many words. Um I definitely like if someone is not settling like with anything then i will like give them what i want which a lot of times i don't know what i want so i'll ask them but i'm not afraid to like say what i want in that way if i have an idea like i'll say it like when you go to say a new restaurant that somebody else says like well let's go to this restaurant you're like, oh, i've never been there okay let's go and if you don't like it and you think like that wasn't very good Will you remember that and next time be like, no, no, let's not go there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. okay. I feel very confident that I know what type you are. I don't think oh, Rachel's been paying hardly any attention, but um, so I don't think she may, I don't think she has an opinion or not. All right. And I, you might not, <laughs> I'll just tell you what type. I feel very certain you are. And I'll right. discover yeah. what happens after that. I believe you're an ISFJ. That was my first guess, just on intuition. Hey, do you think you're an ISFJ too? I don't know. I put myself in like the shoes of like so many types and try to imagine, like, like try to justify I was that type using different like experiences, but like. I've not been able to like settle on because I need that like external voice or like external. Yeah. I, I feel very certain you're an ISFJ. And in fact, one thing that ISFJs do, if they don't agree with me, is do what you're trying to do to figure out your type, which is come up with examples from their own life that are consistent or inconsistent with what they read about a given type. Wow. <laughs> because they're experiential knowers. So, um, I, I, you click, you check off all the boxes. Your T, you test TE polar. So when I ask you that hair question, or cutting your hair question, right? Yeah. You do what every TE polar person tends to do, almost everyone does, which is you say, well, first I need to know this. Why? Because you're a knower. Your, your, your dominant function is a knowing, knowing function. So the correct answer to how do you cut your hair and Five steps is 
Pick up your shirt, put on the bib, get out the clippers, <laughs> clip off all of your hair, and then put it all away. That's what it's, a normal person's response to that would sound like. <laughs> That's why I was laughing at your response. Yeah. It's so textbook to eat poly. But um, yeah, and you clearly have a good relationship with recalling details, specifics, and keeping track of shit and stuff like that. That's very consistent with ISFJ. Um, you have a easy relationship with sleep. It's not like, you know, for people, I, I'm also SI, so I have a relatively easy relationship with sleep. Somebody like Rachel, who's NI, she's got a much more challenging relationship with sleep. Uh, People who don't have SI conscious, they don't know how to, like, make their body feel good, really, or something. Okay. You know, they don't know how to, like, enjoy. They don't know how to go, like, oh, my God, the shower feels so good. Instead, they're listening to a YouTube video. I see. Yeah. Can you give more like examples of like during this whole thing of like when that like solidified i had a certain function or not or like certain like well um your ti answers were correct but slow which is most common like that's the most common thing i get from isfjs <laughs> uh, i get more more variation among infjs uh in terms of ti results mm -hmm. um but the other thing is the reason it's better in isfjs is because they have si so they can keep in mind in their sort of you know working memory or ram or whatever you want to call it uh the details but because they're not ti one or two those kind of details are actually comparatively challenging for you to retain ergo i had to yeah. repeat the, the logic questions an intp or an entp would not need those repeated at all i see i see and then your extroverted intuition, um, it's conscious. Like you clearly, when I when asked, when given the task of of uh, com completing the story that I started, I could sort of visually see you, but you also said words that you conveyed. Okay, let me shift into extroverted intuition. This sort of thing, I know what this is, and I'm gonna come up with some ideas okay where it's unconscious extroverted intuition doesn't have that same kind of affect it's not definitive but it's consistent everything's consistent with isfj i see oh my goodness that's so cool <laughs> and i if you're still cool with me publishing it uh i think you'll find that people in the comments or in the premiere if there's i'll put it up premiere i premiere these so uh, if you uh -huh. are there when it premieres if you want me to premiere at a specific time just tell me when it is i don't know what you're i don't i don't mind at all okay um then uh they'll have they'll voice their opinions too and i bet you there'll be very little pushback on this one i think everybody will agree all right i have a question mm -hmm. like why is it that like my dominant function is SI, but yet, like, and I do, like, I'm talking about routines right now. Like, I am well at, like, planning them, but, like, the execution I'm not great at. Is that just me, or is that something else going on? I mean, that's ISFJs. They're, uh, they're, they're comfortable, creative people who are living in harmony with other people but what they sacrifice is te so you're not bad at following through on shit. you're bad at figuring out the efficient way to do things all right and that's a different thing like um it, or probably situations like um little inconveniences such as oh i my password got erased from this device mm -hmm. probably throw you into a bit of a tizzy because it requires a lot of active sort of nuts and bolts problem solving and not anymore really <laughs> those sort of things used to require a lot more problem solving 
Yeah. Um, but there are probably certain kinds of of like paperwork type of things that require you to first turn in this, then get this approved, and then blah, 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 that are gonna really it's gonna require you to really direct a lot of attention to get your brain around the order of operations. Shit that yeah. has to be has to have an order of operations. It, that necessarily you can get there in more or less efficient ways, right? So it's like I used to coach this event called expository speaking, and I tell people that there are two kinds of expos speeches. How to be cool. It doesn't matter what no, what order the steps go in. You put them in any order. How to take a shower. It does matter the order of the steps. You need to take <laughs> right. off your clothes before you get into the shower. <laughs> So, so the kind of systems that are heavily predicated on that order of operations kind of logic, that's going to be your blind spot and your challenge area. And since effectively completing complex things like college that involve a lot of different units and and requirements and prerequisites and shit like that, you know, um, that can be that you'll probably find that at times a little overwhelming that aspect of it. Yeah, because I like, I don't mind like looking at like all those steps. Like it's good to have it out, but it's, um, it's just like trying to do it for a long period of time. I can't, like, I can't do that for a long period of time of being so like TE, <laughs> I guess, which now it's like yeah. making sense. So I don't like TE either. So we're on okay. the same page there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, we have All the right, same so, functions. That's interesting. Um, I'm sorry. What did you say before? That's interesting. No, I said we use the same functions. I realized then if yeah, you're yeah, in PP, right? Yeah. We're both Alpha Quadra. In that's, fact, you're my dual. So if this yeah. conversation seemed particularly easy and comfortable and natural, yeah. and right. it was because we're duals. All right. So I'll stop this recording and uh, it'll publish. I'll probably schedule for like nine o'clock tomorrow morning. All right. I don't mind when, whatever. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. And have a great evening. Have a great evening too. Bye-bye.